Hello and welcome to yet an another lecture on basic electrical engineering paper code ESE101. Myself Prokhito Rai, Assistant Professor of Dr. Sudhir Chandrasu Institute of Technology and Sports Complex, Department of Electrical Engineering. Today, my topic is Principle of Operation of Boost Converter. Lesson Objective. After the end of this topic, students will be able to understand the working of Boost Converter. So, I am starting my lecture that is Boost Converter. So, Boost Converter is basically or generally a step up converter or we can say the step up chopper. So, Boost Converter, the name that is suggest boost, means it is boosting or in other words we can say the name that is suggest boost means the conception of stepping up or we can say the boost converter is basically a step up converter or step up chopper. This is the general representation of step up converter or basic circuit of step up converter. So now I will come to the operation how this circuit is operated depending upon the switch on and off. So when the switch that is SW1 that is clearly seen, when the switch is a the circuit that is a combination of inductor, diode, capacitor, resistance and along with the switch. This is the basic circuit diagram of step up converter. So, when the switch that is SW1 that is represented is turned on, the switch turned on means the current to the inductor that will raise and the energy that will store within the inductor. So the switch SW1 is turned on means the current, it is the current through the inductor will raise and the energy that is stored in within the inductor when the switch S1 is turned on. And the voltage that is the general configuration when during the on period that is mean we are omitting the diode with the same conception when the switch is on the diode that will be omitted from the circuit and it will act as a reverse bias circuit or we can say that it will open it. it will act as an open switch if i follow the voltage profile or the across the inductor it will the diode will become the in the room reverse biased condition and in case of the reverse bias the diode will always act as an open circuit so the current when the switch is turned on the inductor current that is current that is from the input side voltage the current will rotate through the inductor that means our energy will stored in the inductor so the voltage across the inductors, that is V sub X L, it will come across the, or it will become equal to the V i, that is the instantaneously, 
but the current through the inductor that will increase linearly at that time the voltage vl that is became that is equal to vi instantaneously but the current through the inductor it will increase linearly so when the switch is close the input voltage that is vi will be come across the vl instantaneously and the current through the inductor will goes on increasing in a linear way now this is the operation of the boost conduct converter during the off period so during the off period that means the diode now became forward biased and it will close the circuit the diode circuit will come into play and as a result when the switch is opened the inductor current that is previously it was goes on increasing it will collapse and the energy that was stored in the inductor it will transform to the capacitor through diode first when the switch is closed the diode will come in forward bias this will make the circuit close now the current that is going increasing during the on time of the switch to the inductor it will goes on decreasing or it will collapse and the energy of the inductor that is transformed to the capacitor through diode d the induced voltage across the inductor that is vl reverses and the inductor voltage that you will get added to the source voltage in order to find the output voltage the inductor voltage it will added to the source voltage in order to find the output voltage now the current that was flowing through the previous switch that is s1 it is now started to flow the current that was previously flows through the circuit switch is w1 that is when the switch is closed it is now passes through the inductor diode capacitor and the load resistance the current now started to flow through the inductor diode resistor and through the capacitor so once the switch that is s w1 is again on the voltage across the capacitor that will make the diode in reverse bias and the energy that is the energy in the capacitor it is driven the load current through r when again the switch is on when again the switch is on again when the cycle repeats means the switch is again on that is the the capacitor voltage that will make the diode reverse bias and the diode goes off from the circuit and the capacitor energy that will driven the load current through resistance r that is capacitor energy will driven the load current through the resistance r when the switch get closed once again 
So doing the off view that we have, I have already told the voltage across the load, that is the output voltage V0 is given by output voltage V0 is the summation of Vi plus Vl that is the input voltage and the voltage across the inductor. It is clearly that the value of the V0 is more compared to the Vi as the polarity of the Vl is always same as the Vi during the off field. So the output voltage is compared is more compared to the input voltage. This is the conception of boost converter, which is known as step up converter or step up chopper. It is also noted that during the on period, the current through the diode is zero. It is clear because the diode during the on period is in reverse biased. While during the off period of the switch, the diode current that is equal to the input current because during the off period of the switch, the input current, the same input current that is I suffix I that is flowing through the diode. So diode current will be the input current during the off period of the switch. So the diode current that will be a pulsating one. So this is the representation of the voltage and current wave from at duty cycle 0 0.5 for step up converter. This is the switch that is in on condition that is mean diode is off and this is the off condition of the switch means diode is on. So this is the input current, nature of the input current and the cycle. This is the nature of the output voltage or the voltage across the inductor. We have already known this. And this is the nature of the input current. This is the nature of the diode current that I have told that during the on period, during the on period of the switch, there is no current through the diode and again during the off period means when diode is on off period of the switch means when diode is on there is a current through the diode and this cycle will repeat this is the input current nature and this is the current through the inductor means when the switch is coming from its on state to off state the nature of the when the switch is coming from its off state to on state the nature of the current through the inductor will like through the capacitor will like that when the switch is coming from its off state to in state on state when the switch that is coming from its off state to on state the nature of the current through the inductor will like that the output voltage, the nature of the output voltage, that is V0, it is the summing of the input voltage to the IL and the VL, that is the, is the summation of, output voltage is the summation of input voltage and the voltage across the inductor at instant value, the voltage across the inductor, that is VL is equal to V0, that we have already seen. So the V0 value becomes 2 Vi, that is the conception of step up chopper. It is the nature of the output voltage, that is V0 equal to 2 Vi, and this is the nature of the current through the inductor. Means when the switch is going from its off state to an on state, this is the nature of the current through the inductor. And this is the output voltage because the output voltage is summation of input voltage plus voltage across the inductor. So, means when the switch is turned on that we have already seen, 
the voltage across the inductor that is VL that is become equal to VI. So the total output voltage V0 that is VL plus VI or we can say V0 plus V0 that is 2V0, 2VI. So we can say that V0 equal to VL plus VI when the switch is turned on the value of VL equal to VI that we have seen. So the total output voltage V0 that is VL plus VI that is VI plus VI. So the V0 will become 2 VI. So the source current that is II will be constant and mostly ripple free if the inductance L is sufficiently large. That we have already seen the conception of ripple. If the inductance that is L is sufficiently large, the source current will be constant and it is the ripple free. When the converter is on, the energy that is stored in the inductor during this interval is given by W1 is equal to VIII that is into E1. That is the multiplication of VI into voltage I into input, input current with T1 that is the on time priority. If the capacitor has high value of capacitance, the output voltage will be same in the ripple free and also will remain mostly constant. So during the off interval, the energy transferred to the load that is W2 is equal to V0 minus VI into II into T2 because off time period is T2. So if I neglected the losses, the energy transferred from the inductor during the off period will be same as the energy received by the capacitor during this period, means W1 is equal to W2. We are putting the values of W1 and W2. We will get V0 minus VI that is equal to V1 into T1 by T2. So the V0 that is become equal to VI plus VI into T1 by T2 that is equal to VI into 1 plus T1 by T2. So we can write that VI that is equal to T1 plus T2 means T by T2. So we all know T2 equal to T minus T1. So we can write V0 that is equal to VI into T by T minus T1, if I take divided the numerator and the denominator by T, so we can find V0 that is equal to VI into 1 by 1 minus T1 by T. So T1 by T that is generally known to us as a duty cycle T, so V0 that is equal to VI into 1 by 1 minus D. So if T1 is 0, means the on interval is 0, the D value will be 0. At that time, during the on interval, the output voltage V0 is equal to VI. As the D increases, the output voltage becomes larger than the input voltage. As the value of the D increases from that particular equation, when D equal to 0, V0 equal to VI, but as the value of V increases, the output voltage V0 that is going on increasing and it is more compared to the VI. So the output voltage became larger than that, the input voltage switching frequency being high, so V0 can higher than the V. This is the general conception of buck of the boost converter. So this is the general conception of boost converter where the output voltage is more compared to the input voltage. Also we know that the output power V0 is equal to input power. So we can write VI I, I that is the input power is equal to V0 by R. So just putting those values we are getting II that is V0 squared by VI into 1 by 
r. From that two equation, we will find the value of i i. That is i i equal to d zero square by v i into one by r. So we can write i zero. That is the i i into d two by d. So it is i i into i zero equal to i i. That is the input current i suffix i into one minus d. So it may be noted that when d equal to zero. V zero equal to V I and I zero equal to I I. With D equal to one, the value of V zero that is tends to infinity and I zero tends to zero. So let us now obtain the expression for maximum and minimum input current. That is the power V I that is equal to V I I I. Input power and the output power V zero that is equal to V zero square by R. So if I neglect the conception of the loss, we will find that both of the power are equal. That is input power that is equal to output power. I am just putting those values in, and I can write that it is V I. We can write V zero from that particular equation that is V zero equal to V i by one minus d, so we can write V i square by one minus d square into R. From that equation, we will find the value of I i. That is I i equal to V i by one minus d whole square into R. So we have already seen that the I l value is the I max plus I min by two with I l equal to I i. So we can write that I max plus I min by two equal to I i. So I max plus I min equal to two i. So we all know that V l that is the input voltage V i for that particular boost converter case yes, is L V i d t. So d i one d t that is equal to V i by L from that particular equation. So when the switch is closed during the T1 one interval, that is change in I, that is V I by L, into change in T, that is T1. So change in I, that is means I max minus I min, that is equal to V I by V1 by L into T1. So from that equation, that is this one. This equation and this equation. After summing those, we can find that I max value is I I plus half of V I T one by L. Just putting the value of I I here, that is V I from that equation. The value of I I that we have calculated from that equation, putting those values in this equation, we will get I max equal to V I by One plus d whole square into r plus v i by two l into d one. If I take the v i common, that is v i into one plus one by r into one minus d whole square plus d one by two l. This is the value of i max, and the i min will be found in the same way. That is, i min equal to v i into one minus R V I into one by R into one minus D whole square minus T one by two L. This is the maximum and the minimum value I max and I mean that we have already found. So the peak to peak ripple in the input current I I that is obtained by Difference between I max and I min, that is, I P P I sub X P P P P stands for peak to peak ripple, that is equal to I max minus I min, that is equal to V I T one divided by L, that is equal to V I T one divided by L, that is peak to peak ripple current, that is the difference between I max. Minus I mean, it is the value of peak to peak 
vertical current. So for the continuous current condition, the minimum value of inductance required is obtained by the equation that is the minimum value of I mean that is equal to zero. If I put the minimum value of I mean in this equation, I mean equal to zero. So we will find the value of inductance A equal to half of R P1 into one minus T whole square. So the value of inductance L that is equal to the value of inductance L that is equal to half of R P1 into one minus T whole square. So in order to obtain the boost converter, we will see some numerical examples for the boost converter. That is, a boost converter is supplied from a 110 volt DC source. The output voltage required at the load is 220 volt. If the switch is turned on for t equal to 0, 05 millisecond, find the chopping frequency. So, this is the problem that we have, and we have to find the solution for that particular problem. Now, we are approaching to the solution. The solution state that the output voltage V0 that we have known that is equal to. For the boost converter that is equal to Vl by 1 minus T. So here output voltage V0 is given 220 volt. So if I put the value of output voltage V equal to V0 equal to or V out equal to 220 volt, that is 220 equal to 1 minus T. From that particular value, we will find the value of V, that is V equal to 0 0.5, and we all know that V is nothing but the T1 by T. So we can write T1 into F. So we have to find the chopping frequency, that is the F. So F, that is nothing but the We have find D by T1, so T1 is given 0 0.5 millisecond. So from just putting the value, we have find that chopping frequency A is equal to 1 kilo hertz. So another problem that we are dealing that is a step up converter is operated at frequency 3 kilo hertz. Source voltage is 110 volt DC. And the load resistance is y over. If the average value of the load current be 50 ampere, find the output power, the duty cycle, the average value of current, the average value of current passing through the switch. So first we have to find the output power. The output power P0, we can write that is equal to I0 square into R. And I0 is given that the average value of the load current is 50 ampere. So it is 50 square into 5, that is 1, 2, 5, 0, 0 watt, that is 20.5 kilowatt. Another part is that have to find the duty cycle, that is D. So we all know the output power P0, that is P output is equal to V0 square by R or V output square by R. So V output can be written from that equation that is root over of P0 into R. So P0 is known to us that we have just calculated 1 to 5, 0, 0. And the value of the R that is given is 5 over. So from that equation, we will find the V0 that is 2, 5, 0 volt. So we all know from our step up converter, the equation of the output voltage V0 is equal to Vi by 1 minus D. So V0 by Vi, that is 
or we can say vi by t0 that is equal to 1 minus t or t equal to 1 minus vi by t0. So the value of the vi that is given that is the source voltage is 110 volt. 110 volt means 110 volt. The source voltage is 110 volt. So just putting those values and output voltage that we are obtaining 250. So putting those values into the equation, we will find the duty cycle is D is equal to 0 0.56. So our third problem is the average value of the current. So in order to find the average value of the current, that is Pi that is known to us, that is Ii, that is Di into Ii. So we can write I equal to T i by T i. So if we neglect the losses, that is, if the loss is neglected, the output power is equal to input power is equal to 12.5 kilowatt. So if I put the equation, the value of I i is equal to 12500 by 110, that is 113. Point 6 core ampere. This is the value of average value of the current. Our fourth problem is to find the average value of the current that is passing through the switch. Average value of the current that is passing through the switch. So the average diode current will be same as the load current since the average capacitor current is zero. So, we can write that I0 equal to ID equal to 50 ampere. That is the average value of the load current is equal to the diode current. That is, since the average value of the capacitor is 0. So, the II, that is the I switch that switches to the current is equal to ID, that is the I sub X D, that is the diode current. So, I switch, that is current to the switch is the I, I minus ID. So that is 113.64 minus 50, that is 63.64 ampere. So I, I is the ISW plus ID. I, I is ISW plus ID. So ISW is I, I minus ID, that is 113.64 minus 50, that is 60. 3.64 ampere. Thank you.